Now the question for me is, where am I going to put a sawmill? Maybe I don't need a sawmill. I don't need two bicycles, or three boats, or four motor vehicles, and half a dozen computers. But I don't want my dying thought to be, damn, I wish I'd bought a sawmill. There's no level ground down there towards the house. It's possible to put it alongside the driveway here so the sawdust goes over the bank into the blackberries. But that's going to narrow the driveway too much. My first thought was to put it under this existing shed roof, but distance between the posts is not sufficient. There's level ground back here, but no way to get logs to it. I need the space under this shed roof for vehicles and firewood and boats and stuff. There could be enough room out here, but again, how do you get to it? And that leaves this area here where the kayak trailer is parked at the moment. Some of these trees are going to have to come down. And then two that I really have mixed feelings about cutting down. That's these two tall straight ones here. I am not 100% certain what they are. But I think, I think they are coastal redwood. If so, I believe they're the only two on this property. For that reason, I hate to take them down. On the other hand, since I've decided to buy a sawmill, I look at trees differently. I see an awful lot of very nice lumber in these two. I don't know how much redwood boards are worth. I'll find out. There may be enough there to pay for the damn saw. So, first thing to do, tune up the chainsaw, move the ladder and the kayak trailer someplace, and start cutting down trees. Looking at this tree, and it uh, pretty straight. No reason to think I can't drop it right down the driveway, missing the sheds over here, not falling into that crap. But it's a big tree. And it's tall, and it's going to go, I don't know how far. If I walk out to a point where it's exactly 45 degrees to the top, that distance is also the height. I need for it to fall right here. 
and that's about 45 degrees so it's going to come to about here I want to put a, a rope on it a rope with some tension I have enough rope to do that so that you will not fall on my brand new shed back there or anything else that I don't want it to fall on This is just about exactly where I estimated the top to fall when I was trying to side up at what I guessed to be a 45 degree angle yesterday. Now that was successful. I am happy. Now comes the fun part limbing the thing not too shabby
am still not certain what kind of tree this was. Um, everything I can find out on the internet is coastal redwood. I assumed it was an old tree, but look at these rings. It's only about 25 years old. This started growing right after this was logged. Not clear cut, but selectively logged. All of these alders on the property run under 30 years, 25 years or so. Coastal redwood, 30 years old. Wow, I should plant some more. I don't think there are any more on the property. I certainly have not seen any. Well, this was a bad cut, by the way. The day after I made this cut, Fall Line Ridge had a video where he showed what happened when you don't leave enough hinge to hold the tree as it begins to fall. He got very close, like this, to one side of his hinge and it broke off and fell the wrong way onto a fence. And I saw that video, came out here, looked closely at my cut, and I did the same thing. Uh, my saw bar is not long enough to cut from one side, I had to swap sides and lost track of where I was. Cut clear into here. The hinge was almost gone here. So this could easily have fallen to the right. <laughs> My truck was not here at the moment. But uh, everything else was. One difference is I had the line with a lot of tension strung out right down the driveway to the truck to get the tree started. But I will pay more attention to the hinge from now on.
So here's the bench. The beams were the 20 foot sawmill track will be mounted. Got the manual here. And uh, that's the project for right after we take care of trees. And we're going to put this, it's dry. Not much dry out here right now. 